since my appointment as the minister last month, I've met some of the key players who are here. I've actually discussed with them individually. However, it is my strong belief that we must come together and build the synergies that will drive the important sector to greater heights. Many of you are aware that the government attaches importance to the tourism sector. And the reason is very simple. It is the second foreign exchange earner to this country. It is also the sector that if we harness the potential very well, it is set to grow double digit for the next 10 to 15 years. And therefore, we also have the country is projected to grow 10% growth in the next many years for us to achieve our vision 2030. And the tourism sector is focused to play a key role in that growth. I do believe we have the challenges and we also have the opportunities. So what am I saying? I'm saying we need to think outside the box. We need to do things differently from the way we have done them before. And this is not because I am the new tourism minister. I think it calls upon us to do things differently so that we harness the opportunities that do exist, which I believe in this two days we are going to discuss and we will actually come up with strategies, with plans and action plans to make sure that we deliver. He has already said as I'm with me. But I'm very happy to be here and to open this tourism leadership forum, which I hope will do much to promote the development of the tourism sector. Um, the Ministry of Tourism, therefore, has enormous responsibility in providing leadership towards the full exploitation of our tourism potential. Already, tourism is a leading source of foreign exchange earnings and a major contributor to our GDP. The sector is also instrumental in promoting entrepreneurship, especially through small and medium-scale tourism enterprises and through community-based projects which open important avenues for positive imp impacts on local communities. Tourism also links in with other economic sectors, such as agriculture, manufacturing, and transport. These linkages provide opportunities to stimulate growth across the entire economy. Tourism is thus for us here in Kenya, not a leisure activity, but an economic enterprise of great importance. There are trillions of tourist arrivals across the world annually, and this countries billions of dollars in foreign exchange while providing livelihoods to millions. Our challenge is to ensure that the optimum number of among those tourists come to Kenya, that they find here enough to make them want to return again and again. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to keep in mind that tourism is a leading hope for the future of our country, especially in view of the adverse effects of climate change, which has seriously affected agriculture previously a mainstay of our economy. As in most developing countries, Kenya's tourism is mainly nature-based, so climate and other environmental challenges also affect tourism significantly. What is needed now, therefore, is an innovative approach to sustainable tourism. We must seek to develop quality tourism that offers our customers the best possible product in the context of sound environmental management. 
ladies and gentlemen, I am encouraged to know that the ministry and the tourism sector generally had a sustainable tourism in the forefront of their minds when developing a policy and legal framework. The sector's sustainability is vital for the success of our socio-economic development. My challenge to you now, as leaders in the tourism sector, is to find ways of effectively fast-tracking full implementation of the Tourism Act. When the Act and the related tourism policies are fully in operation, our aim of 3 million tourists a year and tourism earnings of 200 billion shillings annually should not be an impossible task. I would like to see Kenya become the tourist destination in Africa. And in this regard, I have no doubt that together you will make up a formidable team, a team that has what it takes to develop a vibrant tourism sector to which each and every Kenyan can feel proud contributor. For our part, as a government, we are fully committed to providing an enabling environment for a thriving and expanding tourism sector. Um, yes, you, uh, we have got a great athletes in our country. And sports is an area where you can actually get a lot of investment and many tourists can come. Look at the number of tourists who are going to Dubai. The Dubai Grand Prix itself attracts so many people. Tennis uh, tournament in Dubai. Uh, even now there's a Dubai Marathon. And you know the greatest athletes marathoners are from Kenya. Yesterday they had a, a, a travel in uh, men and women, London Marathon. The other day it was Berlin. It was uh, Boston. It was uh, Paris, Amsterdam, all over the world. Kenyans are winning. The other time, when I was in the States four years ago, and they were going to run the uh, uh, New York Marathon, and there was this American champion who was being interviewed. And they asked him, how do you rate your chances tomorrow? His answer was, it depends on how many Kenyans are going to be in the race. <laughs> <laughs> if there are two, I'm going to be number three. <laughs> so you see, you have something to, 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 to market easily. You see, you can have Mombasa Marathon. Then go and have Eldoret Marathon. Say, this is where these great athletes come from. Hmm? And if, if you go and run there, you have a chance of getting an Olympic medal in, uh, in London. So, so we have many ways of marketing our country. You know, you've got such a cultural diversity in our country here. And it's not just Maasai I'm talking about. You see, we have Kenya is so varied. It's so rich in uh, natural beauties that can attract people to come and see much more than the countries that are being mentioned with 20 million tourists. Uh, Spain is, I don't know, 60 million. So we shouldn't be talking about wanting to get 3 million. That's just scratching the surface. I really would want us to be talking about 10 moving towards 15 and 20. That's when we are going to be able to realize our vision 2030. We must think big. Let's not think so small, small, small. These incremental in increases will not take us anywhere. Let us be revolutionary in our thinking. 